Well, hi everybody, it's me and I'm back on the boat. Melissa and Jack have gone to London for a couple of days because Jack has an appointment at Great Ormond Street to check his cochlear implants, uh, so that's cool. Um, so I'm here by myself and it's uh, the weather is certainly starting to pick up. It's a beautiful, sunny, shiny day. It's still flipping cold and it is a bit breezy and I've brought all the welding stuff to the car um, in the car with me rather to, to try and get some welding jobs done but I think on hindsight I'm going to wait for, to do, for a better day to do welding because I think I'd be battling the wind a little bit too much. Yesterday we had a visit from one of our YouTube followers um, who is a welding instructor and an expert uh, TIG welder, MIG welder, stick welder and he's going to be um, helping us out uh, helping uh, us out over the next coming months and weeks to finish all the welding on the boat um, so I could I could do some welding today but I think it's a bit breezy and I'd rather wait until I've had a few more discussions with uh, Nigel before we um, sort of embark on the next phase of it so what I'm gonna do instead is crack on with the saloon I'm gonna need a good tidy up of course in here before I can start um, to stop the cushions getting all covered in dust. But behind these um, insulation panels on the wall, you can see the old chain plates. Now, they only come down through the deck um, a couple of inches, just over the, the, the depth of these, is just over the width of the bar. And my original plan was to bring them right down here. But having spoken to lots of fabricators and engineers and people who know a lot, a lot about physics and metal and things like that, apparently there's no benefit to that. Uh, once you've come down so far uh, and welded all the way around, you're not actually gaining anything. Um, the reason that you see uh, chain plate straps coming down like this on a lot of boats is because they're uh, they're bolted into fiberglass. Uh, but that is way, way, way stronger than even having a, a strip down here bolted with ten or uh, with four or five M10 bolts. What I am going to do when I weld them in is I'm going to put, I'm going to weld all the way around and then I'm going to drill a hole all the way through and weld a bolt in as a pit. So there's kind of a pin that goes all the way through. You'll see. But my plan for today is to make the wooden panels to go around these windows and on the ceiling. I don't have the vinyl yet to cover them. As you know, we're putting wooden paneling and vinyl covering. So, but that's fine. Um, all every panel as I've said in lots of other episodes every panel is removable uh, I want to be able to take every individual panel down with a screwdriver so that we can get behind it to inspect the steel and to do repairs as necessary so I'm going to just simply make every panel that I need to make and in that process make them easy to remove <laughs> Obviously there's a lot of finishing to do, 
sanding the edges and tidying it all up and then covering it in vinyl and what have you, but that's in and we can now move on to the next one. Um, <clears throat> I've put those two panels up with the insulation back behind them, a couple of screws to hold each one in. As I said earlier, they're going to be coming down again because I've got to weld on the new chain plates. And also, as I said earlier, they're going to get covered in vinyl, uh, like we've done everywhere else. But I thought we might not do the vinyl for several weeks, depending on weather and other jobs getting in the way. So I thought I'd just give them a little coat of um, some teak stain to see, just to make, make them look a bit, bit nice and um, to see how it comes out. And it actually comes out really well. Uh, this, isn't, uh, this isn't anything special, this timber. Um, I've not even, we've not even used marine ply. Now this is, gonna, this is gonna generate some comments, I bet. For the inside of the boat, we're using exterior grade hardwood ply. We're not using marine ply. Uh, it's a fraction of the cost. So a sheet of this stuff in 5mm comes to about £15, £20. Marine ply, ply equivalent would be 100 quid. You know, it, it's vastly more expensive. So we might be wrong. We might be, it might be a case of this lasts three years and then it needs replacing. Personally, I don't think it would, I think it's going to last a lot longer because we're sealing it, we're protecting it, and it's hardwood hardwood exterior ply anyway. Um, but even if we're wrong, uh, what we've done is lost 15 quid. <laughs> I can just take it off, draw around it, and put it out, it out of some marine ply and go, okay, I was wrong, and make it in marine ply. But at the minute, we've also got to weigh up cash flow and how much we're spending on different stuff. And I'd rather spend the money on steel for the welding and cut a few corners on interior plywood sheets, uh, which will probably still last several years. And my feeling is they'll probably last just as long as marine ply, because we're not building the boat out of it. Anyway, muffling, I think that looks really cool. Uh, obviously there's trim in the corners and trim round the, round the port lights and all of that stuff to make it look good. Uh, and now I think I'm gonna have a quick tidy up and do to the side. I'm just looking at it from a distance now. I'm going, thinking, well, that's teak veneer, that's teak veneer, that's teak stain on cheap plywood. I can't see much of a difference. So I'm, I'm sure the perfectionists out there will do, but flipping it, that looks okay to me. And here's another reason to be doing all of this. These um, cables coming through 
Oh, I'm guessing it's the cable for that light actually. But it comes through here and then back. And it's only got your standard little chocolate blocks for the wiring, which are pretty poor. And they're behind a panel that's glued in place. So it's completely unserviceable. And if, for what, if that did get snagged and pulled and caused a, a you know, a short, which is horrifying, a 12 volt short on, on a boat, something like this, you'd never, you'd never be able to get to it. You'd, I mean, you could turn the, turn the battery isolators off, but getting to that in an emergency would be, just be a nightmare. So again, new panel going on here, done that one. Irritatingly, the grain goes the wrong way on this piece of wood that I had. I did think I was going to get away with just staining them for now, but it's going to look stupid because the grain on that side goes vertically and vertically there and vertically there and this one's horizontal and I don't have a piece of wood with another vertical grain in it, which is a real pain. Uh, anyway, we're going to cover them in vinyl and repeat them. So I'm going to make a final piece for that. There's the two other panels up the other side. They take an awfully long time to make, believe it or not. Uh, I know it seems like minutes in YouTube world, but the, the shapes are very complicated, the angles are very complicated, getting the, the, oh, the apertures for the port lights in the right place is very complicated. Um, there's going to be even more fiddly work when it comes to putting some nice mahogany trim around the port lights and in the corners and all of that stuff. Um, I'm gonna stop, I think, for a little while now. Uh, I'm still not 100%, Melissa's still not 100%, Jack's still not 100%, so energy levels are a little bit low. Um, so I'm gonna have a cup of tea and then I'm gonna think about whether I wanna carry on this evening or carry on tomorrow morning, but we shall see. I'm quite pleased, I've done four panels in a day. <sighs> that doesn't sound like a lot, but it actually is, <laughs> it's quite a bit of work. So it's freezing here this morning. I woke up, the whole boat's covered in a thick layer of ice and frost, uh, and it's pretty cold inside the boat as well. I really need to get that uh, diesel heater sorted. Uh, we have got a, a little oil-filled radiator here running off the shoreline, but it's uh, barely enough. Anyway, uh, onwards and upwards, um, the uh, deck head in the saloon uh, is going up today. And of course, part of uh, Part of putting the ceiling up is figuring out where all the wiring is going so i'm sort of tracing it all at the minute all these wires up here go to the mast head um the tricolor and the anchor light and the spreader lights and all that kind of gubbins so that's fairly easy to trace i'll be putting a new um electrical enclosure in here this wire here uh, comes through from the control panel in the pilot house and supplies 12 volts to the saloon lighting uh, this wire here comes off of that one and goes into the four peak. Um, so the saloon lighting and the four peak lighting are on the same switch. Um, this one here simply brings power to this lamp. <laughs> so there's all kinds of uh, all kinds of different pieces and bits and pieces, but it's all good quality marine grade uh, multi strand tinned cabling so uh, it's actually been done really well whoever did it in the first place all I've got to do is figure out where it goes and tidy it up a bit so I've tidied up the wiring in the deck head uh, a lot I've still there's still more I want to do this whole area as I say is the kind of main junction box for all the wiring that goes up to the mast I'm going to um, treat this area of course and I'm going to put a um, a little um, proper little conduit box you know like an electrical junction box there uh, but this will this will be fine uh, for a while it's a lot neater and a lot safer and a lot more obvious 
where everything is now. This little uh, doobry what's it here is the control box for the new LED lights for the saloon. Twenty-two centimeters, one thousand two hundred and twenty mil. Nothing on this boat is straight. Nothing. Well, nothing on any boat is straight. Again, all of this is going to be covered in vinyl and have the mahogany, sapili, baroque kind of trimming all over it. <coughs> it's going to look quite cool when it's done, I think. window um, a deck hatch piece cut out. Um, if you've got this far into the episode and you're still paying attention I'm going to give you a bit of a spoiler. Um, tomorrow, uh, and we might film some of this, tomorrow Melissa and Jack and I are driving up somewhere near Manchester to pick up a camper van because the intention is that we move out of our house sometime in the next few months into the camper van to downscale to start downsizing all of our possessions and what have you <clears throat> um, in preparation for when we move aboard Melody. Um, so we'll be, uh, we'll be having a big lifestyle change soon, um, very possibly. Uh, we might do a full episode on that, uh, or we might just leave this tiny little piece in this episode as a bit of a spoiler for those who follow us religiously. So the roof panels are all up, sorry the, the deck head panels are all up and the lights all work, that's very nice. I've ordered some LED bulb replacements to go in the ones on the walls because I actually think they're quite pretty and they are actually metal, they're, they're brass. Um, as I say, these panels that I've put up will be all covered in vinyl, they'll be all trimmed, they'll all look nicer once they're, they're finished. It's actually taken the best part of two days really just to cut these panels out and get them to more or less the right shape. Still a lot of finishing to do as, as I keep saying. Um, but uh, the, the shapes are just so awkward and anybody that's worked on a boat will tell you, you know, nothing square and everything takes twice as long. And on that note, I just wanted to say um, how much I appreciate the work that Melissa does on this boat and how lucky I am to have a partner who does what she does and I'm not talking about how lucky I am to have a woman in my life who does amazing things I'm not talking about gender I'm not talking about gender stereotypes I'm not talking about how amazing it is that she can do these things because she's female that's not what I'm saying I'm talking about how lucky I feel to have a partner who is with me in this venture and uh, who does stuff to such an incredibly high standard very often a much higher standard than I do uh, and is the one that will look at my work and go no you need to redo that it's you need to do it better and will come here by herself and and just churn out some incredible incredible work so thank you Melissa I love you and thank you for the work that you're putting in for our family um, and with that I'm going to say goodbye uh, it's been a quite a sort of um, a nothing episode really just putting some panels up in the in the saloon but um that's the nature of the project and uh, we are a family vlog vlogging our way through the restoration of this boat so we're you know that's it is what it is um love you all see you next week uh, on sailing melody thanks for watching and as always if you haven't subscribed yet hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell and do feel free to drop us a like and leave us a comment we do try and read all the comments and we do try and reply to all of them sometimes the videos get thousands and we just haven't got time to reply to all of them but we do try um, anyway bye bye for now thanks so much for watching remember you can follow our instagram and facebook pages for news and updates 
you can support us on Patreon and Coffee. And you can get our new Sailing Melody shirts and merchandise by clicking the pictures under the video or clicking the links in the video description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click the notification bell and give the video a thumbs up. We will see you very soon. Andy, Melissa and Captain Jack. <laughs>